everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're real excited to be talking about Drop Dead Diva season five today. And get ready. This is going to be another long episode. These are always really long. <laughs> but I've been so amazed because they have they've done. I, I've been so amazed because these episodes have done really well. And they're all, all, all almost, they're all well over an hour. Most of them are an hour and a half. So <laughs> thank you, everyone who, who listens to us talk about Drafted Diva. And it kind of, it, it makes me excited because I think there's a lot more shows that we could probably cover in this format in doing the seasons that aren't palatable to cover like we've done with Heartland, you know, where it took us two and a half years to talk about them every week. Um, and uh, so it's kind of exciting to me that people have enjoyed those, these long, you know, season long recaps. It has been long. It yeah. has been long, but exciting at the same time. Yeah. And I guess I, I, I should have introduced you to begin with. I, I'm Phil Grace Wagner. Of course, Jasmine is here. We've done all of these First. recaps together. <laughs> I am enjoying these recaps, you guys. I yeah, am so back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like catching up with the old, you know, nostalgic show that you haven't seen in a while. And you're like, I forgot I didn't mention this or seen this yeah. the first time going around. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. And season five is really different in a lot of ways. They took some big risks for they characters. Um, and there's really no music in this season i don't know i kind of i'd love to ask josh that about why there's there are no musical i don't think unless i'm forgetting one no there's, there's no musical. one not, yeah. not even the last episode when you have like a mosh touch like yeah yeah when you have flashbacks yes. uh still no there's lots of dream sequences but no musical sequences which is interesting i wonder if they maybe had less budget this well, season or something i think so because i remember was it originally season five was was got can- after season five was canceled for that second and they did season six to wrap everything up mm-hmm. maybe yeah the yeah. only thing I could think of in my mind yeah it's interesting well the first episode is back from the dead da, da, and- da. <laughs> <laughs> as she looks for owen following his wedding day heart attack jane fights to stop a drug company from discontinuing the drug trial that is keeping an eight-year-old cancer patient alive Meanwhile, Kim represents a high school friend whose vengeful ex has posted nude photos of her on the internet. So overall, what do you think of this as a premiere? Oh my goodness, because that, you know, Cliff here from last episode. Mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. Like, you know, you're searching for all we were thinking like, okay, because we're hearing that Jane, you know, the real Jane came back. We're trying to find her and like what's going on you feel like you know it's like, like a walking dance and synopsis like okay yeah. you died you got back up you left the hospital like this sounds like so much like a like a movie cliche mm-hmm. i can't think of the movies right now but i remember this happening before mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah well i mean and it's such a, a a thing to have the left at the altar you know kind of a a, a plot that I mean, that you see that so often in movies uh, and and I've never heard of it ever happening in no. real life ever. No, I've heard of no. engagements breaking up, but I've never heard of anybody getting an actual left at the altar. No, all that money I'm spending, <laughs> don't yeah, break it up before all the big like you know big expenses. Stuff. Like I know I've heard some. No, I heard like you no know, some stories in the past, like you no know, new articles, like how someone got left at the altar. They don't eat their food or they took the vacations and stuff. Mm-hmm. you know i yeah. was wondering what that like you know what i wonder if that was expired by the um by the movie that um that ashley um did remember how it was it um two tickets to um paradise uh-huh actually i left at the altar they made that little um agreement that they're gonna uh pick a place they're gonna go you know away since they both got left at the altar right yeah well, they, that they go on their honeymoons to, yeah together mm-hmm yeah, they, they, who knows whether they were, were inspired by Drop Dead Diva? I don't know, but uh, but but yeah, this it 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 takes up that kind of classic trope, and then it really does some interesting things with it this season in this episode. Of course, you have the added layer of is is uh, Owen Jane. Jane, and she's trying to figure that out. And I think that Jackson does some of his best work in the show in this season. He really, because I had, I had started to kind of be like, 
mm, am I team, uh, am, am I Am I team Owen more than team Grayson? And I don't know. He's very swim worthy in the season. I think he, he has like, shoot. Now, <laughs> now I understand why during the rest of the um, season, Stacy notes, we're going to talk about it later, but yeah. I, understand. I understand. Yeah. I don't know if I needed him to have the Nicole relationship, like his boy. I mean, he falls fast and hard. He sure for- does. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> the whole time like claiming to be basically in love with jane slash deb and he's had vanessa he's had uh kim kim yeah we're at the bar yeah he's had a lot and uh, now nicole's kind of thrown in there as well uh but um but yeah she jane meets with grayson and he says she says when i look at you now all it does is make me feel horrible for hurting owen and she has a dream with uh with uh, Owen and old Jane mm-hmm. uh in there. There's a lot of dreams this season, but like I said, no no musicals. Yeah. Which I miss. But let's talk about the shunning when like that whole like Jane's case pop-up situation mm-hmm. and she had to go talk movie with the judge over you know martinis. And she's like, but did we hear that you know you left Owen at the altar? Or like, oh MG. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, in this one, you have this revenge photo site that that's the one of the tr- one of the cases that yes. uh, Kim is um uh, is on with this high school friend of hers, and uh, that the um uh, then you also have her, you have Jane with trying to help this man uh, who has been, his son has been on this experimental trial, mm-hmm. but then. Uh, the owner of the chemo medicine yeah uh he wants the trial to stop because it because if it is effective people are going to be using less of the chemo uh and uh, and so that's kind of this the main case and of course mm-hmm. you know she's so frustrated because she feels like this should be an obvious yes because we're you're dealing with this you know child that's going to die exactly these drug companies they need, they need to get themselves <laughs> together like it's one thing you know when you're older like you know nothing we could do mm-hmm. situation like actually humans we should actually help each other get healed but gonna do this to a child like mm-hmm. come on medical field we gotta, work, we gotta do better yeah this, this yeah generation. <laughs> yeah i mean and i i feel like they probably could still be so profitable on both it seems like maybe they wouldn't make this choice but but who knows i mean with <laughs> these companies who knows yeah uh what they would do but um we also have luke leaving ciao <laughs> i mean and then they replace him with paul who i felt like was almost exactly the same i i think that it would have been interesting to like they at one point they show another person who has uh, old jane she has a female yes uh, angel so why that might have been been kind of fun to have had like something really different like what if it was like an old woman or something like that <laughs> was i can see her with a k angel. like like here jay's desk like you hear me talking to you <laughs> yeah well and so luke says i'm sorry i wasn't a better angel and I think he was fine. I don't honestly. Think there was any- he was like, I'm not gonna like shade Fred because Fred is my favorite OG <laughs> angel. But Luke was on his stuff. Let's keep it real, you guys. Luke was uh-huh. on his stuff. Yeah. But when we get to Paul, that's a whole different. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then, and and Paul says, when you were in Deb's body, all you cared about was your appearance. Mm. you know which i think is kind of harsh i mean it, it seems like, i guess maybe part of it is that rick jersey is just so likable as an actress that mm. i have a hard time with sometimes how shallow they talk about deb sometimes and I even know. when i talked with josh he was he was pretty uh he was uh, that that uh i asked him about that and you know that why deb wouldn't get, go up to heaven and in that he said that she was not somebody who would kind of notice uh she wouldn't like spit on a a, a, a 
uh, like a homeless man or something like that, but she wouldn't really go out of her way to notice him before. And that was kind of her, um, that she wouldn't take that extra step. And so I guess I can kind of see that, but I don't know. I, I feel like Deb was still a pretty good person. Yeah, she's like, you know, she cared and stuff, but as I feel like as now she's as Jane now, her new identity, her new body, mm-hmm. everything in between. Like she's actually having those um those highs and lows of good and evil. Like she lied to her best friend, like she did all this other stuff, like she keeping secrets, you know, like everybody keeps little white lies per se, but these are you secret. Like she has to keep a whole identity, okay? Mm-hmm. She can't be with a man that she loves, okay? She, yeah she, she, she disrespected um jane's mom because like you're not my real mom like you know bonnie yeah. like you're seeing these moments of like like this like like that one archangel of like Debbie doesn't do any wrong but that makes mistakes during like the first five seasons she's been making mistakes and we're mm-hmm. seeing those things happening in yeah copy human yeah well and i just feel like if it makes grayson look shallow if he's in love with somebody who is they're portraying as shallow like we don't want that for our our hero yeah either and uh and and, i mean she had so many people in her life who loved her exactly like she was positive like she had like you know the little nail polish you know on the corner stacy yes like like she had these moments like she talked about fashion you know and tying it with like everyday like court stuff like wow they do work hand in hand you know like this is making sense but it does like she is not an airhead okay yeah all blondes are not airheads you guys they're yeah. fabulous that's right <laughs> 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 um and so there they have this uh case with the revenge site and they file copyright infringement against the site and kim wins five five k because that's what they were were saying that they had to the photo. pay in order to take mm-hmm. the photo down um and that seemed kind of low to me though i, I know I'm, I'm like i'm like can you know people get caught every day with like you know with news either with like older mm-hmm. adults or children stuff like that but they get harsher sentences and, and it's mm-hmm. a bribe too like he should have got some jail time for that like yeah in my mind well, i mean like, it, it's especially because there wasn't consent and it oh. was i mean because a lot of you know those sites and things like that like people hopefully have consent and the idea is is that she i guess their claim is that she took the pictures willingly and gave them to him willingly so then what she does what he does with the photos is uh is like that that's their claim is that she did give she gave consent because she gave them to to him yeah but they that's when they make the claim about the copyright that it's a um that it's a uh they're using it for commerce mm-hmm. yeah kind of, kind of like they're like rating our professors or anything like but you're rating women and mm-hmm. you have like new photos like what if us women created a site of guys you know you know eight plants like revenge of the eight plants <laughs> and yeah we're rating we're rating them like with their name on it with their picture like this is his picture and this is his peen. Like, do you want a short peen today? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So then we have, uh, we have the treatment getting restarted. She finally yes. has to go to the guy and basically say like, we're, we're going to arrest you. There's going to be like a warrant. If this, if this kid dies, we're going to find you criminally responsible. Mm-hmm. Jane was a mm-hmm yeah <laughs> uh, so his life is saved everything is is great and then she says kissing grayson was amazing but a huge mistake uh, and then we meet real jane real jane original jane we do yeah and it's our friend natalie hall it is i sat here myself like when watching her her movies you know like hallmark i'm like she looks familiar to me. I know I see her somewhere. I don't know why. And it dawned to me while watching the series again. Like, I love her. She's in. Drop it. Yeah. <laughs> so good. So I would give this one a 7.5. I think it's really, it's pretty solid. Yeah. I was going to do an eight. Mm-hmm. Five, eight. Yeah. Okay. So then we have The Real Jane, episode two. 
After taking over the body of a deceased lingerie model, old Jane returns to enlist Jane in a death row appeal that was dropped when she died. Meanwhile, Grayson and Kim represent a mattress salesman who was fired for wearing women's clothes at work. Uh, So yeah, this is an interesting one. I mean, not only because you have real Jane, which is a Mm -hmm. lot of fun. And I thought that (laughs) Natalie did a very good job. I really like the scene where she's interviewing the uh the the jailhouse snitch she's like oh my god i can see her hair flipping yeah <laughs> i like, put it on our insta story or she's like <laughs> oh, Brittany. <laughs> like 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 literally jane's like basically dev getting like jane like advice about how to like you know pouching and good with doing this um mm-hmm. this is hilarious like you're it's like the opposite meeting like you know they like basically switch bodies yeah well it's just the interesting literally. thing about this show though because the way they've set it up real Jane shouldn't have like the legal knowledge anymore because that part of it stays Ooh. the brain stays with stays with Jane Jane and uh and so now she she should have whatever brain intellect this lingerie that that uh um that she has and uh, that her new new uh body has um, so it's a little bit muddy here. <laughs> I think I think they've tried. But I feel as though the um I guess the leeway is that remember how um Fred told Jane, like you have all of Jane's memories. So basically she may maybe Jane has all of her memories of her knowledge and stuff, but like she like but Deb has the super knowledge, like she mm-hmm. remembers all her stuff like as a person and things that mm-hmm. like, Maybe, maybe yeah, I mean, she's in it wasn't a good model. That's why she don't have those skills. <laughs> Deb remembers the. <laughs> I was just saying. Yeah, she remembers the case that yes. it got dropped, and that's part. Of, so that's what she w- really wants to have help with this with uh, this uh, this death row inmate uh, that they were just about to uh, to appeal mm-hmm. everything, and that's when she died. Uh, and the or when jane was shot mm-hmm. and uh, and then i love uh, how it went from i'm mad in the clouds like she's ruining my life to like instead of, i was mad at you but this needs to be you know my my life you know you know mm-hmm. get the spirits you know my last things i need to clear up before i move on to the afterlife and mm-hmm. this is it i'm like at least at least jane had a heart to say yeah i was mad at you deb but this case is real in my heart yeah <laughs> yeah and and so that this this guy matthew is the death row inmate and uh and then uh and then you also get the scene with old jane hugging uh Deb, uh hey. you get the old scene with old jane hugging terry oh god and she's just that was like, hilarious. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's really good and uh and then uh she says, I never thought I cared about those things, clothes, hair. Um, and, and then she also says, just because you're in love with Owen doesn't mean you're not in love with Grayson. Mm. And I think that that was, that was the, uh, the big moment, you know, because it is true that she does love both of them. She does. Yeah. And uh, I mean, how are you feeling at this point? Were you feeling like, oh, I wish that she was with Owen or are like, you? I'm so heartbroken though. Like <laughs> they both get married y'all. Like I said, I saw the divorce, but they both get married. Like I was ready to see them kids. I ready to see uh-huh. them honey move back to Italy again or wherever they yeah. want to go. Like, or see Jake or see Gracie trying to chase after them, like to confess his love, but it was too late. But he, you know, he was in the audience, like mm-hmm. something, but yeah he's still missing yeah ho 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 we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies patreon do you love hallmarkies podcast especially at christmas do you enjoy the holiday previews recaps interviews and bonus episodes if the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies patreon we need your help to do what we do both during the christmas season and all year round but not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. 
Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. We also find out that Parker is staying in Toronto. He's getting yes. back with Alicia. And, and so Ooh, Kim, Kim yeah. is devastated because she's pregnant and uh, gets very upset. And uh, so we start, we see a softening of Kim quite a bit in this season. Yes. Remember this mother mm-hmm. got her changing, y'all. Like, yeah. like they, they need to be for the better, but like you see her being vulnerable because, you know, women, we are sensitive regardless but she's carrying a, a baby. Her baby daddy left her to go be with his first baby mama in uh, Toronto. Yeah. He's going through a lot, y'all. Hmm. Yeah. Well, and so there's this man who goes in drag to sell mattresses. And it turns out that this is all basically a stunt to get publicity. And I feel like that is highly unlikely because... It, this would be extremely expensive. <laughs> that part. <laughs> like, like having lawyers and things, that's really expensive. And so you would have to bring in so many more people. And I feel like there's not that many people that would be like that intrigued about the fact there's a drag queen selling mattresses. That part. Like, I know it's hilarious because they mentioned like, um, I guess, I guess they mentioned a scene talking about, yeah, well, in fact, no, I'm like laughing like, it was the Fresno and Bigger jokes that is just connected to this series. Mm-hmm. But talking about, oh, there was this um drag, um, drag lady selling like you know mattresses too. But like, okay, I live in Fresno. Yes, the birds outside on the corner of Blackstone and Shaw. And like I do see like the little the um this old this older lady, she um would do like the signage for like the is like the uh taxes uh-huh. with like her um waving the um waving her little thing for like the statue of liberty i remember yeah. her bus that's how i remember but mm-hmm. i'm like i seen seen these people though but i didn't see drag oh sure yeah <laughs> i mean see you definitely sign waivers that's a that's a thing yeah but that you would make this whole spectacle in court just to uh just to get attention and you know things go viral or whatever uh i don't think <gasps> that that would be worth it for the uh legal fees <laughs> Ooh, what is very expensive. this what if this was the pretense of what the viral stuff that is happening now? Like, think about what, okay, what if the show didn't know about the viral things happening mm-hmm. right now? What if the, maybe the show, this episode, was the pivotal moment of people doing viral things? I don't think so. But okay. I mean, I think they were still viral before, but true. But, uh, but uh, whether it would create so many more sales that it would be worth it, I don't, I don't think so. But, uh, I mean, like, what do you think? Do you think I got that uh, man was a good drag? Like drag? he 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 on his walk, he on his talk. <laughs> he did. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! Too bad Ro Paul was not in this episode. That would been amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. It, 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 it would be like a fun banter. Like if Ro Paul was the judge, like, honey, I can do better than you or something. Like I would. I yeah. Would be- <laughs> <laughs> Um, so then we have uh, the, the, we find out that the snitch, the jailhouse snitch was the real killer mm-hmm. uh, and that he knew the details, not because uh, this guy had told him, but because he did it. Um, yes. And the, I have to say that the judge believes everything extremely quickly. I mean, I, I guess know, they just right? needed to wrap it up and she's like, okay uh they there's a stay of execution and the release of the client and uh yeah and and then we have old jane uh now that the case is done old jane is going to go to paris and start a, a whole new life so, Ooh. yeah a lot a lot has happened uh, <laughs> so, man like even even to the mom that you know the of the of the one who lost her child like you told me that, like I, that slap was crazy though like she does slap i'm like dang jane has been through a, a, oh yeah jane has been through enough you guys not only did like owen have a heart attack call her kissing well kissing grayson and then 
doing all this stuff. Yeah, this Someone woman. Didn't even know about the have... case, left the mess out of her. Like, walked up to her, like, bloop. like, I'm like, do you not know my circumstance? I literally got shot. You do you not know? Because <laughs> they're trying to find if there's this like residue. Yeah, it was like the, the, the yeah, body the or teeth marks. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. And teeth marks. And so Jane talks to the mother of the victim. And yeah, she's the, she slaps her. Hey, y'all jay has been through enough in the past like three episodes y'all like, no. give her give, 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 give grace please yeah let her catch up on life please it is a little surprising that owen isn't a little bit more understanding given the fact that he had that whole time when he left her mm. and was just like gone and she Forget but I, I guess he he he's always been somewhat suspect of the relation between Grayson. And so maybe if it had been somebody else, the Jane had kissed on the, he might've been able to toss it up to just wedding jitters or whatever, but maybe the fact that it is Grayson makes him, you know, feel like that there, cause he says later, he says, there is no, there was no chance that we were going to get back together uh, because after that kiss. So. Yeah, remember they were they remember they were beefing like you know between like the basketball games and stuff like yeah you know, yeah you know what happened is that's it true now? but now it's like okay you're mad because oh yeah jane kiss you know, or gracie kiss jane how it was how it was leaning but say <laughs> you have a heart attack you should have been punched gracie <laughs> and then we could have like a crazy like you know instead of a heart attack moment it could have been like oh my gosh and you know yeah yeah. And then Grayson would have been in the hospital again. Like the first time he got hit the car. Second time he got punched by Owen. Yeah. Yeah. Poor Grace. Man. <laughs> what a what a time he's had. He has. Uh, so what would you give this one one to ten? One to ten, I'll definitely give this a seven point five. Mm. I'd give it an eight just because of natalie i think she's so funny as oh, yeah, no, no. she nailed her whole mm. entire like model. now i need to change my number to eight now because she did, <laughs> know, she did know that um courthouse scene you know mm-hmm. she, she freaking terry out you know she was doing natalie you did your thing okay yes all right the next episode is called surrogates and this is jane struggles to keep her personal feelings aside while representing a jilted bride who's suing the former groom for damages kim and grayson represent a surrogate mother looking for the missing parents of the child she is about to deliver stacy gets discouraged when she seeks advice from business mogul barbara corcoran about the bakery jane and stacy have a new house guest when paul crashes at their apartment and kim announces the new partner at the firm shocking jane and grayson so that that's probably the big shocker is now you have owen as jane's new boss as <laughs> his new partner this whole episode alone has been crazy <laughs> okay first last episode you have parker say i'm saying in toronto by deuces now owen's here like it's one thing that they are you know not getting married their relationship is a question mark now owen shows back up yeah well and as her boss and i mean he's so bitter when he like he comes in and he sees uh jane and grayson together working oh my and he's God, like, yes. don't stop on my account <laughs> okay it was man, that yeah. was juicy i was like ooh, i'm like you just I, talking about some pastries or some i coffee. just love lex medlin so much he is so great as owen I uh, podcast we got to yeah I know we really do come on Lex if you're listening please we need all the tea on the show your deliverance we need the tea (laughs) yes and uh, and so Stacy is going to this business conference uh where Barbara Corcoran is there from Shark Tank Mm -hmm. and Barbara likes the idea of the bakery likes the idea of the, the pig but but she doesn't have any business plan or any idea of like profits or anything. And I feel like at this point, she absolutely would have something. I mean, she's been doing this bakery for a while now. And I mean, you have to have like, just to do your taxes and things like that. Like you have to have some of that information. 
That is a good question. Like, how did she even do her taxes? <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out. Like, I mean, I'm not like, Stacey was all over the place. Like, you know, her dream was, it was probably open, but I think she didn't think of it on a larger scale of like, you know, supplies. Yeah. You know, anybody who's worked in a, you know, company, especially doing orders, like what products do we have? What we have in stock? Are we doing like the off brand? Are we doing the, you know, the better, you know, name brand for the quality of the product? Like all these things are happening, but she doesn't know. Cause you know, yeah, she's- you have to have some idea of like your expenses and, mm-hmm. and your, uh, in order to price your product, you know, right. Mm-hmm. You need to know what your, uh, individual costs are on each of the, your production costs are for each product. Mm-hmm. I mean, just stuff like that. Like you just, it just like, they're trying to pretend like, oh, she's not smart and so that's why she doesn't know this information, but I feel like it doesn't really matter if she's smart. You just have to have this stuff just to like function. Exactly. And I'm, you know? and I'm surprised that Terry did not find her an accountant to do. Yeah. Her. I'm like, Terry, like, speak, like, you know, Terry trying to make her fail sometimes, you know, the last time yeah. you know, Terry helped her out, she got in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So then the other story going on in this episode is you have, uh, you have uh, this woman coming to Kim, it was a surrogate, uh, but there is no way that you would go about all of this without like major contracts and made like yes. the fact that she didn't have a contract with this lawyer. And, uh, I mean, cause like literally you can't exchange like human bodies for like commerce that's not allowed like the dark web right now yeah <laughs> they're very careful i mean when you do a surrogacy situation like you're not you're not paying for a surrogate it's an it's you're paying for the medical care mm-hmm. of the surrogate like yes. you can't buy someone's child that doesn't that that's just not how we work in America. And uh, and so, yeah, all of this would have to go through major lawyers, major. And I guess maybe that's where they got tripped up is that this woman wasn't a lawyer. Yes, Maybe that's why she was able to, to convince them to do all of this without actual contracts. Mm -hmm. But like, it's crazy that this family would, would be giving all of these, making all these payments, giving all this money and, and, uh, and not have an actual like contract okay you would be nuts to do that that okay that part okay because definitely because a perfect example i love this movie it's one of my favorite movies like uh baby mama with like tina fey mm-hmm. amy like that's like my movie like it talks about it it's just it, hilarious moments of life like how did yeah. you see correctly you guys and then you find well watch the movie you guys know what i'm talking about yeah well my <laughs> my cousin they had uh twins through us through through it's actually i guess the correct name is gestational carrier is, is the okay. technical name but uh, they had twins and uh it was a woman who had done it a couple i think a couple times uh or at least once i think before uh and you have to in order to be a surrogate or a gestational carrier you have you to have, have to have successfully had child yeah uh, in order to and in the case of this story they uh, she had mm-hmm. uh, but she's sitting there now where she's going to be responsible for the child even though it's not her child uh and she she was just trying to get some money but also you know help a help a couple help a family yeah. and, and the baby get taken away y'all <laughs> yeah i was like the cbs came yeah out that, there, y'all. <laughs> yeah that child services woman was that was that was tough. <laughs> Although that baby was huge. Okay, how, <laughs> it was not a newborn. <laughs> like mothers out there, I know I had like you know we have like our friends, our aunts, like everybody. How did y'all get that? That baby was huge. Like yeah, it was not a newborn. Like I would I not mean, have not recovered. Okay, <laughs> that that reminded me of the scene in uh, Baby Mama when they were watching the birth, and then like Amy's character like <laughs> like we got come back from that. <laughs> Her popcorn, <laughs> like I was like I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. So then this couple ends up getting to actually adopt the baby. Yes. And uh yeah, because they blame the couple uh of that at first the reason it takes the baby away is that they they think they were involved with the fraud, but mm-hmm. it was really just this this lawyer because then Stacy goes undercover 
yeah. and uh, and as if she's a potential surrogate and um and uh, she she figures out what's what's going on here with this um lawyer mm-hmm. yeah so that was all pretty good pretty good story and you have owen just being so cranky he returns oh the gosh. wedding gifts yes <laughs> like, oh. uh, like maybe it's the next episode when like no i think it was the next episode when um or was it this episode where he had her get dry a case oh yeah so no the other story in this episode is uh is that you have this woman who got uh, got left by her um fiance yep and she's just devastated so she wants to sue and you can't sue for broken heart a broken heart basically and hearts a lot in this in this series and then finally, yeah, they do have that a lot. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then the fiance apologizes to her name is Pam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because we only oh, met Corbett walking like a hawk. I was yeah. like, and then after that, and that's when, like, you know, when, um, when, when the, um, when they put the, you know, the apologize stuff, like, you the ring back and stuff like that. Well, Say, yeah. And so, so then Owen says, before I met you, I was happy. I was single, but I was happy. And now that I've lost you, I feel lonely all the time. Dang. And I really, I, 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 this connected to me because I, I'm perfectly, honestly, I'm perfectly happy like being single, but I think it would actually be almost harder to be single and to have had to be like to be divorced, to be or to have had, you know, something like this happen with, you know, you think you're going to get married. Like, I would rather just kind of be content single than be mm-hmm. like have trauma relationship, you know? So like, I understand what he was saying there. Yeah. It was like, you know, it was like that one person changed his mind and gave him some type of hope. Cause he was living his best, you know, mm-hmm. bachelor life, like, like George Clooney, like I'm not yeah. carrying <laughs> the world till someone ties him down. And gives them my twins, but in this case scenario, it did not happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised that like um, Owen had not given um, Grace any shitty like um, what's the term cases yet because he would have been on yeah. him by now. But that's just me. I digress. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he definitely was trying to give this one to Jane to make her feel bad about yeah. being left, but uh, and she, it worked. Is yeah, right. she put then, that ring down on the, on the coffee oh, table. Oh yeah, and then she leaves the ring. Man. It like officially over. I'm saying here, you know, she want to win him back. I'm like it's over. I'm like, yeah. Uh, so what would you give this episode one? This yeah, I'm gonna give this eight point five. Yes, yeah, it's, it's eight point yeah. five. Oh, we also have Paul at the house. He's Child. like, he's can we talk about Paul? Because Paul is, is 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 like a little like high school teenager <laughs> dude still trying to grow into his um his life like he's really <laughs> a surfer yeah i mean you think that Modeling. if she if she had proven herself to be kind of high maintenance in the guardian angel department you think they would send somebody else <laughs> okay someone hard like, i guess i guess no, no no remember what he said no one would take your case like oh, oh, no, no, oh that's right but wait wait but 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 the uh but the um the lady who took um jane to paris with her she gets yeah. the case what happened <laughs> Yeah, we don't get any more of that, but uh, but but yeah, I mean, it it was it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to think that Stacy is very comfortable with having these these guardian angels stay at their house. Stacy's too comfortable. Like just, She's like, yo, sure, like that's like the most double <laughs> thing. Like, you know, I don't let anybody stay in my house because it's not just for like a little trip. It's like an extended, basically a, a roommate situation. <laughs> that part. She's Even very fine by- with it. And my uh, the only who actually paid rent was Fred. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so, uh, yeah. What did you, what did you give this one? One to 10? It was eight. Eight. eight point, no, 8.5. 8.5. 8. 8. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's some good cases. So I got to give it a bump for that. And I just feel bad for Owen. All right. So then we have the next episode. Episode four is called Cheaters. And it's in an attempt to be professional. Jane and Owen partner on a case of a teenage boy who has been accused of cheating on the SATs. 
Meanwhile, Kim and Grayson defend the owner of a dog that is accused of impregnating a prized pooch that lives next door. Jane enlists Paul to spy on Stacy when she begins acting strangely. So, yeah, so Jane and Owen, uh, at first she's trying to avoid Owen at the beginning. <laughs> she's trying to get in there. And then, uh, and, and then, so Jane asks Paul to spy on Owen mm-hmm. and then later on asks her to spy and ask him to spy on Stacy. And, uh, and then we get, we even, we do get a great scene, I think between Grayson and Stacy where yeah. Grayson says, should I move on? Mm-hmm. And Stacy says, maybe she needs to see a life with you. Uh, and you know, basically saying like, she loves you. She just needs to believe. And, and it would be easy. Cause it, when, when he finds out later, he says, you know, you watched me grieve. You watched me, you almost married Owen. I'm like, yeah, buddy, you, you were with like five different people. <laughs> okay. You, you were engaged to one. Yeah. Like, come on. <laughs> Uh-huh. He, he's going through a lot y'all Gracie, he don't know where his feelings are at he, he he's just using his other head at this mm-hmm. moment yeah and so then we have this whole thing with this test and it is true that mm. that sometimes people will take adderall to people that are in these super intense i've heard of this this super oh. intense testing kind of environment that they'll take adderall to uh improve their brain performance um uh, and so that, i've heard of that that's a real thing and so this guy <laughs> he ends up he he's uh, he, his score was so much better that mm-hmm. it triggered an immediate investigation okay. which probably is a thing that sounds I think right it is too because like think about it we already had like an sat scandal getting into college like mm-hmm. like with drugs involved too like anything happen i know i didn't yeah. do that i'm like i felt i felt on my own merit i got whatever score i got <laughs> and i went to school y'all <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i wasn't a uh, great well particularly the like the math part i wasn't good i was pretty good at like the more english uh problem solving kind of thing side of things but i was not great at the math portion of the act mm-hmm. and so that's why i was nervous if i would get into the college i wanted to go to because my score was definitely on the low side mm-hmm. uh, my my reading side was good but my math was terrible i'm not good at math but well, thankfully i got in it was a little both though but i know my reading like it's like was not you know writing wise on that end but if i got years later like I actually did have a learning disability. So it made more sense, like what was going on. I'm like, okay, I get what's going on. The little mm-hmm. on paper, what's going on. But I'm just like, yeah. Cause even people mm-hmm. talking about, oh, take the eight, you know, take the ACT, cause it'd be more better than the SAT. I'm like, well, shit, we, I, I failed the same way. Like, you know, kind of like, you know, not the best, but like I was kind of mm-hmm. okay ish ish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What'd you think of this whole plot with the dogs? Oh my gosh! It, this is—I feel like this happens every day. And she's like, "Your your dog, apparently my dog. We have to um, share custody of these." Yes, this this is basically of he say she say like mm-hmm. everything. I'm like, well, and then you find out that the uh, the <laughs> owner the of the dog did on purpose, yes, so that uh, that she, he wouldn't sell her little doggy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay that's just so that's so sad just doing that on purpose she, okay the dog was an innocent victim okay i feel like at the end of the day it's not the two adults that are bickering about the whole situation it's about putting an innocent dog mind their business in danger mm-hmm. like well okay what happened to the dog would have like ate like tore, tore the dog up like you know get the dog gonna die like that's true like that's a good point like it happened to my aunt's dog like my aunt's dog my, my aunt uncle's dog got out and the pit, dog, pit bull down the street he all right mm. Johnson, like that was so sad i was just like yeah really? but i'm like no now now i feel like she should be showing him like you need to pay my uh pay my my doctor business now like pay all this you know how like we joke about you pregnant this person now here's like here's my um doggy bag for like restitutions mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what had occurred 
Yeah. Well, I mean, they must have, the dogs must have spent some time together. So there must to. have been some way that she knew that, that this was going to be successful. And, uh, but uh, it was, it, that dog was super cute. It was a really cute little dog. And, and then when the, uh, when it, Stella was the dog's name and when yeah. the guy's like, she's kind of fat. Oh my God. And she's like, excuse me. Yeah. Yes. They don't raise their hands, y'all. JC was ready. <laughs> I was there with you, girl. I was there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And then you also have really funny with this whole dog thing that, that, <laughs> that uh that jane is an attractive nuisance along with the dog <laughs> which i thought was really funny like there, there's some good jokes in here you guys yeah um and so then we have we we think that the janitor is selling the drugs i know like and i don't it turns out days. uh because so <laughs> there's this whole scene where stacy pretends to be like young stepmom of paul Mm-hmm. entering into <laughs> school and they're like oh it's just like uh, 22 jump street <laughs> what oh it was like the way, whole joke of 22 jump street is yes. that they don't look like high school students at all and then they're, and that's when they were doing drugs too yeah <laughs> but okay but let's look okay let's give it up for this nod of mentioning 22 jump street because our queen holly ross and pete was actually in the original series oh, yeah, yeah let's give that true. nod i love yep, how we bring yep, in yep. more stuff <laughs> And, uh, and so that was a really funny scene when they're videotaping it and just pretending to be his mom. I enjoyed that. And then they find out that it's really the principal that is the drug okay. dealer. Oh, okay. I yeah. And, uh, and so then Owen says that if someone has a moral center, they don't get caught up in the moment. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. Owen. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh and, moral compass i don't know oh and like i agree with you but at the same time you were going in heart surgery well anybody knowing mm-hmm. yeah you, know you just left like for a whole almost two weeks yeah 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 and then we have the uh they reach a settlement on the drug case yes and we have this whole conversation between uh, so Grayson sets up this kind of like romantic dinner for yeah. Jane. And then he says, I can't see my life without you. And then she tells him to go. And he says, look me in the eye and tell me this isn't real. Oh, child. This is getting <laughs> so far from like 90s and um, music videos. Moment yeah. Like, Why? <laughs> Because you enjoy escaping into Hallmark movies, we're pretty sure you're going to enjoy another podcast called Criminality about celebrities. Specifically, reality personalities behaving badly in business, crime, and just generally. Criminality is a show about the intersection of true crime and reality TV, hosted by good friends and lovers of bad TV, Melissa and Rebecca. Every other Friday, they bring a new story about a reality TV star and their brush with crime, legal troubles, and trashy scandals. On Criminality, you'll go way beyond the headlines with episodes about some of the OG reality stars like Anna Nicole Smith, Kim Kardashian, and Tarek Al Moussa. And if Bravo is your reality TV flavor, you're in luck because they keep up with the endless tea pouring out from nearly all the Housewives franchises. The fun never stops as Melissa and Rebecca remind us all that loving reality TV is not a crime. Catch new episodes of Criminality every other Friday wherever you listen to podcasts and visit criminalityshow.com for more information. That's criminalityshow.com. Yeah. You're playing with our hearts. You're playing with our hearts and our emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really. I mean, you were just, you felt so bad because this is what she had wanted for so long. Mm-hmm. And it just feels like this, I was saying some, some like trips, you go on trips and they just seem like they're cursed. Like nothing goes right. And I feel like sometimes in shows, at least there's certain relationships where it just seems like they can't catch a break. Come on. <laughs> and I think you'd have to say Grayson and Jane are, are one of those couples that just can't seem to okay. catch a break. No matter what happens, you ever try to tear them apart. You can't be together, <laughs> but they're some type of way to sabotage things. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, so what would you give this one, one to 10? Oh my God. It, it, all like the inside jokes and everything. This is definitely up there in the eight, in eight category. This is definitely mm-hmm. in the category. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then we have episode five and then this one is secret lives. And it's Jane tries to impress both Owen and the owners of major ba- of a major baseball team by representing their star player when he's accused of murder. Meanwhile, Kim Kim helps a friend fight for her alimony. Owen's new assistant Nicole helps Grayson mend his broken heart, and Terry advises Stacy on what to look for in a sperm donor. So that's also we find out in the last episode that Stacy is thinking about having a baby. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. they, out of nowhere. I remember after she sold the bakery and stuff, like. I want to be a mom. I sat here like, Stacy, <laughs> you wanted to be a model. Mm-hmm. Then you want to be an actress, a bakery owner. Now you want to be a mom. I feel like I'm back in college all over again, picking my majors. <laughs> we we're trying to like, I feel like we're still, oh, she's in our 20s. Like, you're trying to figure out what you want in life. I'm like, this is definitely Stacy. <laughs> she's yeah. living our dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dabbling a little yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean- I can understand though, because there does become a certain age where it feels like this is not happening. So I, can I make it happen? I thought about it and it's not something, I just didn't feel like it's something that I would be very good at alone. Mm. You know, like I'm not the most like maternal cozy person. So doing that all alone, I just felt like, I don't know if I could do it, but I definitely thought about it because it just feels like it feels like this experience that almost you kind of need to have to be a human, you know, like it's such a part of being, especially a woman to have a child, you know, and, and exactly. to, to, like, no, some so you're missing hurts. out on, you're missing out on all of these human experiences that are so like essential and classic and everything. And you feel as a single person, you feel sometimes like, I don't know that you're not like living a full life and mm. and that can be hard sometimes oh no I definitely agree mm-hmm. like I'm sitting here in my early 30s like okay I'm, I'm still living my single life you know doing my thing you know but I have, everybody had those moments of like you know I would love to have a partner to have a family with sure. some people are doing it solo who have the the means or the you know financial you know game but I know for me like i rather have someone with me doing this together as a team we're yeah. gonna you know have a village that's gonna help us grow and be better like you know parents and stuff like you know but to the women who are out there doing it by surrogacy or doing it you know with with a sperm donor kudos to you because you guys are the real mvps and you guys come on i wait for like a very long time for somebody else i am make it happen myself yeah the single mother by choice i think it's it's totally a, a, you know an admirable uh lovely thing but but, uh, but definitely is something that I just didn't, it didn't feel right for me, but mm-hmm. I can totally yeah. understand that inclination and, and why, you know, why they, uh, why some choose that route for sure. But, um, but yeah, so Stacy's looking for a donor and, uh, then you have Owen and Jane working on another case together. Uh, there's this whole, uh, baseball player scott reynolds arrested for murder uh, and basically the uh the the they find out that this guy scott reynolds that he has a boyfriend that he's not uh wasn't really actually dating this this woman um that he's accused of uh murdering and that she was just kind of playing along but he doesn't want to come out as gay. And at a certain point he's fired. And we also find out that Owen uh, is representing the team, which does seem like that would be a problem. Like if she's representing Scott, like to have in the same firm, uh, him representing the team, I would think that that would be a problem Conflict no that's you know that is a problem because we had remember we had that same issue a couple episodes a couple of episodes i want to say it was season two where um jane and kim was gonna uh, meet with opposing yeah. parties and they had to vote it on it with harris about um yeah. what yeah about, with parker about um who's gonna take the case who followed it first because we can't because both of them can't represent mm-hmm. the same person yeah 
So we also have Grayson getting upset with Jane and then flirting with Nicole and them making out <laughs> mm-hmm. twice, yes. twice in this <laughs> episode. You're just like, oh, oh, Grayson. <laughs> um, so then you also have this, uh, let's see here. So then you also have this casino that's going after this uh, guy, George, his winnings. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, and uh, yeah, it's Kim's friend. Uh, um, so Kim's friend is paying alimony for her ex-husband. And then the prosecutor comes in and provides the discovery like right there in, uh, in court. Like you don't, you have to give people more than like, you have to discovery. You have to have some time. And so they're like, I think they give them, gave her an hour (laughs) to give you an hour to look at all this stuff man uh, for Jane. And, uh, and then, uh, they're trying to make, they're trying to convince Scott to, uh, come out, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't want to. And he says, you're not a very good attorney. If you can't approve, I did not do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, without that being a part because she wants to use this alibi of course yeah uh but um uh then they find out that the owner of the baseball team had been having an affair Ooh. Uh, yeah and that he killed lisa to hide the affair and that was why Mm-mm. i'm gonna keep it real with you guys on this episode i kept watching like the star player why does he sound like Trevor? At first, kind of like watching it, like walking away for a second, something to drink. I'm like, Trevor. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're not in this episode. What's going on? I'm like, <laughs> if Trevor had a brother or a cousin, it'd be this actor, like right Trevor now. Donovan. Yes, which we're okay. gonna see coming soon. I can see that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we have Bridget Brana, who's on Army Wife. She plays yes, Kim's she, friend, the queen, one who came to like, alimony. Yes. Yeah, who I, I I love her. She's very good. And Sandra Bernard is the judge mm-hmm. in this one, which is fun. And uh, then we have, uh, let's see here. Um, oh, but, but, but remember, Stacey did find her match though for the sperm. Remember, remember, yes. remember, remember they were going through like the listing and then they found the sperm, but then they rent out the sperm and then. Terry- oh yeah. And then there's, there's kind of spying on the sperm donor yes. and she decides that she wants to know the sperm donor. Uh, which is very risky. I, I would think I that, it, that would be hard and it, it proves to become complicated pretty quickly, it but, uh, but yeah. And, uh, and then, uh, Owen apologizes to Jane. Mm-hmm. So things are, are looking better for them. While Stacy making her list in the corner of <laughs> all their check marks, because yeah. remember, remember she told Jane, like the reason I didn't take him after all, because he <sighs> ignored his mother's phone call. Like, what if I call my child and he ignored me? Mm-hmm. i was like okay but she was making the list of like why they were having that conversation like this is owen oh, i mean and i don't blame her because owen would probably be pretty high up on almost anybody's list he's so True. charming like, he has, he's he has so super, nice like he's a well traveler like you know well let's talk about well so what do you give this episode <laughs> oh secret lies i definitely am gonna give this uh 8.5 because not only this case these cases were crazy and you know everybody won their cases also during like now more than ever more athletes are coming out saying that they're you know that they're yeah that was a nice ending i know i was really happy and they, they set them back with some more money mm-hmm. there you go so yeah because it's still professional it is, sports is kind yeah. of the one of the last i think like big organizations that it, it doesn't happen that often no it's still pretty they're so pretty closeted mm-hmm. i mean and maybe that's just because it's sort of the stereotype the machismo you know actor is. actor athlete the machismo athlete um that you know they they are nervous about giving it up i don't know but uh but anyway yeah that was nice um i i give this one like a 7.5 secret uh the um secret lives anyway so then we have uh, fool for love. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. When is it going to come? <laughs> is this is the winter allergies. <laughs> <laughs> like, I know it's coming. 
Okay. So we have Jane attempts to reconcile with Owen while they work together, representing a professor who's been arrested for smuggling drugs. Kim goes up against Grayson's ex fiance Vanessa, in a case where Kim represents a woman fighting for rights to a very successful video game she created with her recently deceased boyfriend. Stacy invites a handful of her exes to a donor party where she tries to assess who might be the, be the best sperm donor. Um, so I thought it was funny with Paul doing the chai tea. <laughs> oh funny. gosh, that whole dinner. That whole be cool. <laughs> Ooh, he's I a pretty he's good like idea. himbo like the dopey slug of a man he's pretty funny he I is think. yeah that himbo. uh and so they say find an excuse to touch owen so you get some pretty funny little comedy in this where she's like in the elevator trying to touch him uh, and like breaks her shoe somehow and like everything just goes wrong which was funny i know for sure breaking that heel i she always always Jane sue about that shoe because those, those, <laughs> okay if they were red bottoms she better sue too okay yeah <laughs> I, can see, I can see her now saying her case like I am a lawyer and my shoe broke while I was trying to touch uh my soon to be husband one day Grace in an elevator and this will happen like your product made this connection not happen yeah right <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like how did that happen with her shoe like they just like so many things had to go wrong it was funny and then uh the uh we have this whole thing with uh we have paul getting kim the uh, bungaboo stroller so she can uh she can match with this that vanessa is also pregnant and she oh my goodness it's yeah. so cute they're in the uh, bathroom hanging up their their slip flops for the hills you know you guys <laughs> live we do this like where we're like walking long distances and then we're gonna get ready to change our shoes but in this you case- know what would have been funny though is if in this whole thing with vanessa and grayson if like her dad had been the judge that would have been oh. really funny but they didn't do that but it was still they did funny. not at all yeah but at least we're putting paul kind of somewhat in good use because remember um when they uh, remember when Nicole got hired by through Owen and she and uh, Nicole told Kim like I don't do any errands I don't do personal errands I do yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I was like sis go <laughs> ahead let Kim know by herself yeah you know you tried to Kim but you've been doing it for years <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to see a softer side of Kim though it, yes. and she's like crying in court and everything and they're I like no <laughs> it was good uh, and so Vanessa does apologize to Grayson and Stacy has this whole party and she's like, I don't like any of these donors, which makes sense if they're your exes. Why would you want to have a baby with one of your exes? Like I, they're I your exes for a reason. Exactly. Okay. Like I couldn't do it. Like unless you got back with your ex and you know, mm-hmm. it didn't happen, but I know like, it's interesting like- that she never considered Grayson because Grayson is actually her friend, you know, like, I feel like, but I mean, I think it would be just, that would be just too hard because. Oh, especially on, especially on Jane, because it's like, it's one thing you're going to have to ask Owen, you know, get your blessing, you know, and next episode, towards the end of the episode, it's another, you're going to ask the love of her life. Oh, Grayson, can you give me some of your sperm? Because I know you are, you know good looking you know, have education sports wise then now that, 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 that would put jane in the hospital yeah 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 i mean because i think that stacy knows that that jane is supposed to be with grayson so so it where she she feels i and you see this later on where she basically says that you were never gonna be with really be with Owen again like it was not gonna happen and so I think she knows that but it is interesting that she didn't even consider it uh, considering that they're actually friends mm-hmm. and uh, and then uh we have um Owen realize I mean Stacy realizing that Owen fits all of her criteria yeah you see me yeah, yeah. And uh, so then I, I can't even remember in my notes. I said that the woman stopped from getting embryos implanted. Oh yeah. So basically, what what happened, well, basically what happened is that 
Um, she had to prove it to court. Oh, like actually, she did win because her she had secret messages in the video games, and that you know she won. So now she's like, you know what? Since I'm since I'm having this behind me, stuff, so I'm gonna have my baby. You know, mm-hmm. it was, you know, for our family, and then the family blocked them for doing it because, like, no. Because, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, mm-hmm. There's like this two year window stuff like that because they're trying to like you know the money. The parent, I understand like. He didn't have no will and stuff like that. I understand no, but the parents were being really, really greedy. Mm-hmm. Very. Yeah. And then there's this whole thing with the catfishing. Yes, the catfish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the online online girlfriend. And it, they find out that it that's with a picture of death. That they're catfishing. <laughs> Uh, and uh and so then finally this lady apologizes for doing what she did and then stacy decides to ask owen to be the donor and jane gets uh, you know very upset so yeah yeah i think this episode's pretty good it's fun to see vanessa and kim i know so cute because i've been yeah. watching to see vanessa and like yeah. then remember remember she left gates at the altar remember mm-hmm. that right yep 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 so i give this one 8.5 definitely 8.5 yeah yeah okay so then we have missed congeniality and this one is jane and grayson represent pageant contestant donna when she's stripped of her crown affair claiming the miss universal globe competition has been rigged as kim's due date approaches she represents her formerly estranged father larry when he loses his job coaching a little league team stacy continues her crusade to convince jane that owen would be her ideal sperm donor and grayson and nicole struggle to define their relationship so yes so we have kim's dad with the baseball team <laughs> there <laughs> you gotta love kim's dad you know mm-hmm. first 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 you know Getting his, you know, moving into somebody's house, his boss's house. Now yeah. he's coaching little league. Yeah, he ends up getting arrested at a certain point yeah. with this. What? Um, and uh, you also find out that he talked to Parker about being there for the birth, and and so it's just a mess. <laughs> drama, drama. Yeah, he will do a lot, y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then we have the baby shower. There's a baby shower for Kim. That's that was kind of funny. It's like, why are we sh- <laughs> <laughs> all the time? Kim and Nina us. Every time just why are we throwing her? <laughs> yeah. And then things are getting more intense between Grayson and Nicole. I know. It's off with, mm-hmm. with, a, with, a, with a drink, then a little nightcap. I'm like, mm-hmm. Grayson, what's going on? This is gonna be perfect. and then Kim asks Grayson about Nicole. And then they ask, he asks nicole on a date mm-hmm. i thought he was gonna break up with her on the balcony i'm not even gonna lie y'all i thought <laughs> it would happen because 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 kim the partner said so and yeah he's like no <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah and so the, basically the beauty queen had found this note uh with the results mm-hmm. and so she feels like it's rigged so that's where that kind of comes into play um uh stacy asks uh owen if he will be the donor she says no at first and then she makes she starts stress baking <laughs> which is funny uh-huh. hey, you gotta, you gotta have a stress reliever like what is your answer to stress relievers like you know you get stressed and high you know questioning moments of life like what do you do <laughs> you're walking yeah. bake tanks you, <laughs> yeah, what's your away. what's your to- stress coping thing that you do my stress sure. coping, I will definitely have to. I can't be a, a cliche saying I'm going to watch a Hallmark movie. Like, that's yeah. what I'm about. But no, actually, <laughs> what I do is what I do is I try to listen to some music, honestly, like like some um some like some music, like, you know, that helps me calm uh-huh. down, therapy, therapeutic music to calm, me, to calm me down. And if, you know, my cat Miko behaves himself yeah. and like, play with me and not bite me, he could like be my cuddle person. I don't know if it's really like my stress coping mechanism, but I do, the people might not realize watching uh, on the podcast or listening, certainly, is that I'm a fidgeter. I, I, if I have like a piece of paper in my hand, uh, it will be 
torn to sleep. <laughs> I want to fart by the end. Like that's definitely a way I express stress is through fidgeting through, uh, even when I go to like a play or a movie, I, I, I try to have something that I can kind of be playing with my hands because it's just mm. hard for me to just sit and, uh, and not have, it's just because of my dyslexia. I, 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 uh, I have, I'm a fidgeter. <laughs> so that is one way I definitely express stress. You but, know what, uh, actually, I think the back actually is puzzling, actually. I think, oh, I think yeah, yeah. Not, yeah, because, okay. like, because, because my disability is um, dysgraphia. So basically, it's hard for me to write, I know what to say, though, but it's hard to be around paper if it's, like, testing mm-hmm. or anything. Mm-hmm. So I remember doing my testing, um, my partner asked me, like, I was doing, all, like, all the pictures fast, they put them together. He's like, do you do puzzles? I'm like, Yeah. So when I have a puzzle yeah. or something out, I will just do puzzles. It's like calming, so like something stressing me out. I'm going to the puzzle real quick. Give me like 20 mm-hmm. minutes of the time to do puzzling. Yeah. 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 I can see how that would definitely be helpful. Uh, so uh, yeah, this episode, this episode was, was fun, but it's kind of a little bit more filler. In that the would have like, mm-hmm. So I would give this one a seven. Definitely a 7.5. Yeah, we did find out the end about what happened yeah. with the rigging and everything like that. And the the beauty pageant owns the beauty pageant. I'm not, you know, because mm-hmm. because literally because Jane was upset with her when you found out what like this little stuff that was going on. Like, how can I represent you? I'm like, Jane, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash hallmarkies. Eight, 50 Shades of Grayson. Following a long night at a bachelorette party, Jane ends up at the U.S.-Mexico border to defend the bride's fiancé, whose bachelor party went south of the border. Jane must get the groom back into the U.S. in time for the wedding. Kim represents a housewife who claims that her online erotic novel has been plagiarized by a major publisher. Meanwhile, a mysterious man appears at the firm, yet his motives remain unclear to the lawyers of Harrison and Parker. Owen struggles with his new role as Stacy's sperm donor. I love this episode. This I episode. Think... <laughs> Speaking I think of this Gina is... Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And I mean, it just gives you everything you want in a drop dead. Maybe if it had a song, then it would be perfect. But it oh gives you God. almost everything you want in a drop dead diva episode. It's silly. It's ridiculous. The cases are kind of silly and ridiculous, but they're fun. Uh, they're kind of saucy and the whole thing with the, uh, the erotica was, uh, was really funny and well done. And, uh, and then Louise, I was a big fan. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. And I'm so sorry about all this noise. They're doing something. I'm like, what's happening? <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. That's okay. But no, like even the title alone, 50 shades of Grayson, like, did we ever thought about that during season one? Like when he first came on the scene, like could Gracie be 50 shades? <laughs> yeah. You just well, I mean, like- obviously, yeah, they're, well, I mean, it makes sense because he's going through all these women. <laughs> <laughs> it makes sense. And mind you, I never read the book, by the way, of 50 shades of the gray. Either. I'm like, why? I can do vampire <laughs> novels. My but didn't you fans. think this Louise was super charming? I was like, wow, he he's was. Scary. I wish there had been more of an arc because he was I, great. I, I, was, I was down for this arc, actually. Yeah. I really was down until he like flipped the script, but I was down the way he was helping her. Like they had this like little cute little meat cue yeah. by the coffee. Like I had I had the good <laughs> I had the good sugar in the back when I come here. <laughs> yeah, and then they 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 have that. They basically have a date and they have a kiss, and I was like, "Whoa, this mind guy is you, great." Mind you, he kissed Jane. Oh Jane yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, she was like, yeah. "Whoa, yeah." 
but I guess I was looking at this actor, uh, James Martinez is his name. And he was on, uh, one day at a time, uh, for a run. And then also he was on love Victor. Oh yeah. For I think the whole run. So okay. yeah, I don't know if he's like a parent or what, but anyway, he's great. I he was, he was, he was going to be all the action that we needed. Like, yeah. <laughs> I thought he really was going to be Jay's new love interest. Yeah, I don't know why. I like, like, I live in Long Beach. You live in LA. I'm like, it's you know, with traffic, you know, 45 yeah. minutes without traffic. Give it about 25. Yeah, you can make it work. <laughs> so basically, the this fiance gets sloshed at the uh, at the bachelor party. They're going to get married in two days, but now he's stuck in mexico right and he's yes. it turns out he's not a u.s citizen right there's that all means- kinds of drama and um and that there's also the solicitation of a prostitute that comes into things wow. um, but it turns out it was trevor donovan trevor. <laughs> we, we gotta talk about this when we get him on the podcast <laughs> next time we gotta talk about this like how is this episode because we need to know <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah well and then Stacy was funny in this one because she's, you know, tra- about, about the sperm donor. And I like it when she's like, keep the fish in the basket, buddy. <laughs> that was funny. Like, give him the like, cup and everything. <laughs> yeah. Give me anything. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and so then Kim goes into labor during court, <laughs> which was funny. <laughs> and, uh, and, Parker is going to sell his part of the firm. That's why this guy's around. He's like trying to, yes. to um uh get a accurate by a pricing number. But I feel like just kind of watching people do lawyering and stuff, I don't feel like that would really tell you that much about how what the firm is worth. Mm-hmm. You know, like I think you'd have to really go into the books and find out like how mm. much settlements they're getting, uh and yeah. versus pro bono work versus you know like just all how much salaries are how many partners there are like that's the kind of stuff you'd need to know i feel like just kind of like hanging around the office like wouldn't be that helpful <laughs> that part and i'm not gonna lie that thing about it because parker's not in this um in this season i'm probably going to use skype as a way to communicate in like kind of like these fun like five minute meetings every mm-hmm. like few episodes like you know this was going on you guys like he could have made the announcement like through, through um skype like I'm selling the firm. Yeah, or something. I'm leaving the firm. And I could be like, don't, don, don't. Like, well, like, and he's a rich person. He could come and and spend, you know, a weekend at the, or a week at the firm closing everything up. But like, obviously he got, the actor got another job. True. So that's why uh, he wasn't there and they, they wrote him off the show. Uh, let me see what he... That is a good um, question. I'm, I'm gonna see here. What gay did he get after Jane the Virgin? Not Jane the Virgin. I've been having Jane the Virgin in my mind the whole time, thinking of Jane <laughs> in this series. So let's see here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, this one is just—it's really funny. It's a little bit spicy, uh, and I, uh, I just really enjoyed it and then at the end we says any day without grayson is a wasted day life is too short don't waste a minute and then that's when jane sees grayson kissing nicole so (laughs) so i'd give this one a 9.5 yes this is definitely a 9.5 for me it's really funny um okay then we have episode nine trust me and this one is Jane's uh sorry, Jane's efforts to save a battered women's shelter inadvertently jeopardize its future. Grayson represents a teenager who claims to be a vampire. Uh, so what did you think about this episode? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's between the vampire and like it's a vampire for me. <laughs> I guess because you know, a little <laughs> twilight moment. This is no, this is the this is the era of the twilight saga moment during this. Yeah. Era, but yeah <laughs> but uh, but it was the um uh the the actor playing the vampire was on um big love on the show on the, okay on that show that's all right seen him before i'm like oh but he's, he's one dedicated. of those 
he definitely has the the baby face he always looks oh, so young his name's uh douglas smith mm-hmm. and he uh it was a good a pretty good story you know that i mean the idea that they're going to consider vampires a protected class is ridiculous <laughs> that is, is it's so ridiculous but anyway like he's fired and you kind of have this whole thing of like should people be fired for like things that if they're still doing a good job in their work uh, and uh, and so should they be fired for the clothes they wear or the things they do and things like that um and in i don't know it's interesting i think it just it depends on the job because yeah. there are some jobs that a particular uniform or particular Mm -hmm. i think is essential to uh to the performance of the job but other stuff where it doesn't matter no because like remember his job was working at the zoo and he worked at nighttime so no one was going to see him because you know he Mm -hmm. can't come out in the daytime but like for instance like and one of my one of my old jobs in a bowling alley. I remember we had like we had to dress up like for New Year's like we got the okay now got our uniforms dress up nice I had a fr- I had a friend desk person came in wearing a Pokemon onesie. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's not dressing up for the new year, right? <laughs> this is it's not a Pokemon convention. We're trying to catch them all. <laughs> yeah, or like so, it, it that <laughs> that you uh, they I don't know. Like you can't you shouldn't be able to wear like pajamas basically. That's basically what it was. <laughs> oh, pajamas, honestly, yeah. I think you're like no. Like mm-hmm. he wasn't like nothing was like he nothing he was doing his job nothing he was gonna wear anything mm-hmm. that was gonna like long long things that were gonna um get ganked by the animals or anything to put him in danger compared to other yeah. jobs. Well, and so then you have this flight attendant feeling like Darren was a threat to the passengers because of the way that he was dressed, mm-hmm. and you know I don't know it's tr- it's a tricky thing especially when you're dealing with a flight attendant who has to make these decisions fairly quickly and doesn't have like a long exposure to this person like she has to decide i mean i guess he would have gotten through all of the security so there's at least that uh yeah. but uh i don't know i can understand why the flight attendant would be concerned okay Is it, okay i feel like it would be different if he was posing a threat like grace said was he posing a threat mm-hmm. like he he's had to change now like we'll be tired like it happens all the mm-hmm. time during traveling like i'm tired i want to see the sun i'm close to get down like mm-hmm. it'll be different yeah. if we're like okay we're leaving and you're raising the shades up or something but this is like go out back to fly out like let people go to sleep in peace mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean i think in the end most flight attendants would just let him you know in his weird outfit or whatever it's fine like let him go as long as, i mean because like i said he had gone through security he was safe it just like looks a little weird so you probably wouldn't do anything but but anyway that's what she does and then uh and then we have this whole thing between this uh this woman who wants to run this shelter but the brother is resentful of her using the trust uh, that she's in. Uh, and boy, things get crazy with this. It does. So that um, basically there is a clause in the, uh, in the trust that says if they file, if she files against the trust, uh, they, I forget what they called it, this particular kind of clause. And if they do that, then she loses all her standing in the trust, everything. Yeah. And not only that, by, she, by has the to pay back, she has to pay back everything that she had already gotten in the trust. Mm-hmm. You're, yes. you're control her brother as it was. Like she turned her life around, but then it was kind of like, I'm doing you, not the trust. And then when they, that one word slipped in when Jane said it, it was like, oh. oh. So, so she messes up about this and- and so then the lady sues her, uh, and uh, and she is under threat of malpractice because she should have seen this clause, mm-hmm. and uh, and then so then she ends up on the stand, and uh, and then uh, she's like crying and everything. Oh my god! It, no, and on top of that, put the uh, firm in jeopardy. Yes. So she's like, no, no, distracted. No, 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 
Owen's pissed. He's like, mm-hmm. Jade, what are you like? <laughs> like, I got to cover. Like, why, well, watch after you? After I get done with this, you're gonna make me partner. Like, I'm yeah. gonna fix it. Like, I'm like, Jade, how are you? And think? it turns out to be this whole thing where she, I, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I was a little, a little confused, a little convoluted, but like. They, she wanted them to find this so that then the, the brother and the sister would, uh, real, that the trust was invalid. So then the malpractice is dropped mm-hmm. and, uh, and it turns out she was just pretending on the stand. Yeah. Cause uh, you have a bracelet and stuff because as part of like, you know, a selling this, like, you know, the next generation, I'm like, what? And somehow <laughs> Parker sells his shares back. Yes. And Jane becomes partner. It all Whoa. becomes true. That's so, hard. Yes. And Stacy is pregnant. Yes. Uh, so it's a huge, huge thing. Uh, so then Grayson comes out, tells her he's dating Nicole uh, now that she's a partner. Yes. I feel like you wouldn't tell Jane, especially on her partner party. I feel like you would tell Kim. Why would you not tell Kim? I mean, I guess this came out for the baby but still like you could call her that's uh, you would not tell jane <laughs> that part i thought i thought i thought he would have told kim i think i think kim knew because remember like you need to end this now because yeah like, but now they're kim. like officially dating officially, so that's yes. why you have to tell the partner mm-hmm. that uh like for Talk pr reasons for i mean mm-hmm. hr reasons uh so that was all wild <laughs> i was just kind of like okay whatever uh and then uh, and, and Grayson says, sorry, there, there's only so much rejection that I can take. Uh, uh, and then Paul, so he, she's talking to Paul and she's, he says, she says, well, what about the rules that I'm not supposed to date Grayson? And he says, I don't care about the rules. Life is short. If you don't like the rules, make new ones. I'm, okay. but I'm a really yeah. bad guardian angel or a good friend. I don't know if I'm a really bad guardian angel. You know or what? Good that was the most helpful thing Paul has said <laughs> yeah. throughout this whole entire season. Because yeah. I'm sitting here like, you're MIA like a couple of days. You don't, I'm like, where are you, boy? Like, where? <laughs> yeah. Well, and so then also, uh there Owen wants to put this an amendment in that he's not going to spend time or that the kid the child's not going to know who his who his or her father is until there's 12 I think yeah and so like Stacey's kind of upset about that and uh and it's like and then Owen says well it seemed like that you were wanting more of an investment this was the deal and then at the end, they are like fighting, fighting, and then they kiss. <laughs> God, I was not expecting that to happen at all. So, I'm like, yeah, I mean, how do you feel? Do you think they were successful? Because this was a big risk because so many people loved, I remember at the time it being like this love triangle between team Owen, team Grayson. Yes. And I remember loving Owen. And uh, this was a risk to put Owen with the best friend Casey, the best friend and yeah. you know and you know girls have go, a girl code you can't be naming your ex mm-hmm. yeah wait, wait till next episode pretty fresh ex as well yes no i'm not, not i'm not just any ex it was my fiance that was about to marry recently thank you <laughs> last year uh so yeah i i can understand that but you know Sometimes life just works out that way. It was definitely a risky choice. Does, Do you but... feel like Stacy and Owen have chemistry? Let's see. Hopefully it builds. Like, you know, they, it's kind of like opposites attract situation. I think it's okay. I think they have okay chemistry. They, but you know, I still do love Jane and Owen so much. That's a little, it's a little hard, even at the end. It's, but. It's, it makes our hearts, you know, <laughs> we Owen forever be team Owen. We don't care what happens in, in the season six. Like, but I am glad that they made a, a happy place for Owen to land. Exactly. Something happened. I did like him so much. So I guess I like it from that angle. So mm-hmm. this is a pretty good episode. I, I think I would give this one and a nine. Yeah, definitely a nine because about how how they how they uh, finesse um Harrison, you know, well Par- Harrison Parker, well technically mm-hmm. Parker, you know, mm-hmm. I, I agree with that. That was beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we have the kiss, uh, episode ten, 
And as Owen and Grayson fight for a client's right to marry the woman he loves, Jane handles two divorces that resulted from unconventional marriage therapy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one has a lot going on, but we have Hallmark regular David Alpay. Playing. So basically he's playing this man who like became a company that people could like bid on his life choices. That is true. Right. Um, he starts out looking like Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> and, <laughs> that's not funny. Um, and that the shareholders dictate everything he does and he's worried they won't approve of his girlfriend. And so this was pre Hamilton, the musical Hamilton. Yeah. That came out in 2015. <laughs> Look it. This way, in order for Hamilton to, you know, run, this yeah. episode had us crawling. Yeah. Um, so did they need them out singing? That would have been that would icing on the Yeah, cake. it would have been nice to have had a song in this. But uh, but we have uh Elena Douglas playing this therapist that uh that right, did I get that right? Yeah. Um yeah, Elena Douglas. We have this, uh, we have Elena Douglas in this one who I love, she's so good. And uh, and she's this therapist, and she had she had had Jane in before and they'd had a five-year goal. And she's like, why are you, you haven't achieved any of the things in the five-year goal? Uh, and there's this whole wife swapping thing, uh, that's happened. And, uh, and the, um, they the couples are suing each other. Um, and supposedly in this wife swap thing, you aren't supposed to actually cheat. Um, uh, and, uh, so, but they, they did, um, I don't know. What did you think about all of this going on in this episode? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So basically we find out a little more about Jane than we thought. We did not know Jane was going to therapy. I, mm -hmm. I can tell you guys every season you find something new about Jane that we do not know. <laughs> yeah. He was going to therapy. Not only that, seeing this doctor that we actually know. Remember, if you guys did not see um, the latest movie that she was in on Hallmark, it was um, what was the name of it again? It was the um, it was it was from from Love You Where. It was the uh, Made for Me. The oh yeah, that was so disappointing. That was so disappointing. But I love her. I love. I know we did. Um, and but she was also in she was one of the ghost moms yes just my yes, kiss. yes. Yeah. we will we promote that movie by the way that movie yes that's fine yeah. me. it was <laughs> that was really good but uh but yeah so i don't know there's all of this going back forth and then that could be a tv show um yeah spouse swap but you know how we had that the, the, the <laughs> um the mom swap like in the family you know how the how the tv show was the wife, yeah, wife swap. swap yeah wife swap but but this was like couples, a whole couple. Yes, it's like an yeah. open marriage situation, though, but, but get have mm -hmm. sex, but then get a fall for each other. This could be great for TV, but I digress. You know, <laughs> we came up with the idea first. So we have this whole thing with uh, her seeing Owen and Stacy on the date. And she's going, she's on this date, and then her date steals her purse and car. Oh, okay. <laughs> because thank you paul. paul oh yeah that's what it was paul set her up on the date <laughs> and and then so then owen talks to J to jane about it stacy and jane have a fight Lord. and uh, he says well what do you she says what do you see in her and he, he says for one thing kindness uh and he says stacy didn't do anything wrong there's no such thing as the girl code. This is what the therapist says. Oh. And uh, and then he says, you violated that code the moment you kiss Grayson. And then Stacy moves out because Jane just can't deal with it, can't accept it. Mm. <laughs> oh. oh, that like, no, of all the fights they had, this was the most like detrimental fight. That yeah. I, like, I had to pack my bag and go out the house. Like, mm -hmm. I, thought the, I thought Fisher was not going to last, y'all. I was like, Wait, they, they're really gonna break up for real, for real? Like, they've been through so <laughs> well, much together. I'm also wondering, like, who owns this house? Does Jane own the house or does 
I need to know because remember, <laughs> remember, Paul was the new land. Well, not Paul, Luke was the new land. Oh Lord. yeah, I forgot about that. So what that. happens after that? No, <laughs> there's no explanation after that. Yeah, the, 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 like Luke leave the house today. I'm like, I just need to know. Yeah, this one's pretty fun. I give this a seven and a half. I mean, this is definitely going to be eight for sure. <laughs> it's just, this whole thing was just hilarious. I'm like, yeah. Well, at least look, Jane her stuff back at least though, but I'm just like, Lord. <laughs> but we did find out though that there was, there, I think, was there a loophole in that case with the um with those um swap spouses and stuff? Like, I guess they found something. I think they won the case or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it was something like that. I didn't even write it down. <laughs> but <laughs> all right, so then we have one shot, uh, episode eleven. And it's as a former client looks to Jane when she's marked for death by a ruthless drug dealer, Owen fights to save a teen actress's career by stopping the publication of a nude photo. So this one I, it is pretty a, a pretty good episode. And it's definitely one of the ones where, it, I mean, it starts off like kind of shocking because you've got this, this, uh, it starts with there being these people being shot at the law firm and then it goes back 12 hours so this has a lot going on in this episode Yo, this remind me of like was it season two or season three women when jane was part of the da mm-hmm. yeah yep. character like you know, yeah and it, it kind of reminded me of the um of the one where she's defending the the pop singers yes the sisters this, yes this is yeah. crazy <laughs> Um, so then this woman, Becca, she, uh, she's there because, uh, she finds this storage bin in this, uh, in this garden warehouse with all of these, all this cocaine in it. Uh, and so now the drug mafia, I guess, is after her. Yeah. Uh, and so then the DA is saying that she needs to go into witness protection and that she can't say goodbye to her boyfriend. But then we find out that maybe her boyfriend is no good. <laughs> like, yeah, this yeah. is, this is, yeah. This, this, is amazing. this is like a make keep like this episode was like this whole story. Like could have been a whole movie y'all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Uh, it was a good, good case. Um, and then we have uh, Owen telling Jane, we were never getting back together the moment she kissed Grayson or telling dad to thing. And um and so that's kind of this says a lot um and then owen uh tries to talk to jane about stacy and then stacy comes in and says that she there's because there's this uh teen actor who's on like a disney type show or nickelodeon type show Mm -hmm. and she this artist took this this photographer took this picture of her she's trying to have it taken down uh, and, uh, and then Stacy comes in and says, she's posing. And so that sort of changes the whole case of that. Nice. She was trying to do this in order to, cause she wants to go to college, like Natalie Portman. <laughs> and, <laughs> Sorry, uh, Natalie, we'll <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then, and her dad is being a butt about it. And, uh, and then, I mean, I don't know why she can't do both, but if she doesn't want to, it's her life. Like she, uh, she should be able to make at least some decisions, even if she's a minor. Mm-hmm. But um, but this is her attempt to try to uh, th- this will go out there, and then uh, she will be kicked off of the show. That's her goal. Mm-hmm. And we have to speak on this because this happens every day, especially with like our favorite child stars that are already grown up. Mm-hmm. A lot of their parents put them in these shows or these television ads, things like that sometimes against their will because you have to make the money for the family mm-hmm. yeah they can't make the decision because definitely well, can get really messy yeah and uh, there have been stories out there there are actual child actors who actually are lawyers now trying to help out these mm-hmm. uh, minors now like right. like, there's like the actress that played in um and i carly like she wrote in a book about that about her experience oh yeah I yeah. didn't read it again, but yeah. you know, a lot of these stories are happening. You know, even even um, Cole Sprouse is talking about it about his spirit, how his parents got him in the business with his brother. Like mm-hmm. these stories are happening every day, and yeah, like, we have to like listen to our kids now. Like sometimes they're burnt out. Like you can't, yeah. like, yes, there may be your meal, but 
But well, what, and they certainly should be allowed to go to college if they want exactly. to go to college. I've seen plenty of actor, <laughs> actresses and actors go to college after their TV shows and like that. Like, like for instance, like Tia Tamara Morgan. They went to um, they went to college. They went to um, the sure. Penn and got their degrees. There's other mm-hmm. actors who did that. Yeah, and, or and they came Brooke back. Shields went to Princeton yes. famously. Yeah. Um, so then we have the we have Paul trying to rom com jane and stacy back together as friends <laughs> which was cute it was cute that was funny at the spa like <laughs> <laughs> yeah he sets them up with a manicure and everything the wrong one. <laughs> mm-hmm. um and then um supposedly the boyfriend was going to propose and uh, and we find out that so richard kind is in this episode Mm-hmm. and uh he is uh he wants this love contract but in reality he's really just kind of spying on this other couple with the drug people um and that he's the one who told told that they would be there and everything that was so. crazy i'm like you guys in there you're like i didn't tell like it was just, this was definitely like some like mystery situation I'm not going to lie. This could be actually a great like um, <laughs> movie and mystery uh, mm-hmm. to our own home. Like cozy, we're putting it out there. We're, we're yeah. There. <laughs> um, so then the boyfriend, Neil, he proposes. And this is when it's true love. You just know. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, so Nicole and Grayson are going on a romantic weekend, supposedly. Mm. Then Jane and Stacy get the manicure, like you said. And Jane says, if you and Owen have something real, you need to try it. And then we see the flashbacks of Jane and Stacy. I cry. It was just like the first time. I'm not gonna lie, can we talk about this though? But Stacy's um had the best glow up. Let's talk. Well, besides Jane, of course, though, but Stacy, like mm-hmm. from the first episode, how she was to like now, like she's been she's been glowing. I'm like, I'm feeling this look. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, and especially since Fred left, like she really hasn't had anybody, so it's nice uh that she uh she has somebody here that's the soft place to land and yeah. somebody who really respects her and uh so what would you give this episode i am definitely gonna give this episode 9.5 because th- the whole premise of everything that happened in this episode was basically was a fun. movie yeah <laughs> yeah i agree especially with the going back 12 hours and- yes all that stuff i'm not gonna lie i thought jane got shot again you guys. yeah i did I'm too like, come I did on too. give us a break <laughs> okay so then we have episode 12 it's guess who's coming and it's bobby ar- is arrested for hiring a male prostitute exposes some unorthodox steps she's taken to improve her sex life grayson fights to keep a client's divorce case from being moved to wyoming um so yeah i mean i don't really the the whole thing with grayson and wyoming in this episode i could like do without i don't really care about that but it, the the thing with jane and bobby um i think that's a really like good case um we do get a dream at the beginning uh with this dumb luck game show with jaleel, <laughs> jaleel white which is yeah, i love him i, love I him. do too he's never done anything for hallmark he, he has fun. not and yeah you know what? I'm, not, I'm not i'm not going on twitter but like or going <laughs> on instagram I'm like bro can you do a hallmark film like he that? should he would be good he why not good too. what and else is he doing <laughs> i know right but i'm gonna keep it real with you guys like this i'm gonna honest with you guys i had to go online to watch this episode because this the episode was just like last um uh, last season was not aired because of this topic and oh and interesting and why, Yes, they did. They did not because they aired 11 and they skipped to 13 because of the content of this episode of like, you know, mm-hmm. let's take, I understood. Why did yeah. you this on, on, on um, Hallmark? So basically, Bobby had surgery to make her spot hotter. Is yeah, that fair? Is that and then she got some collagen. I don't want to get kicked her- off YouTube. I know. So basically, basically, you basically use collagen no, she had like her, a, a surgery. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. Someone, she shot it up at her lady part area. Yeah. <laughs> her spot was spottier. Yes, spot <laughs> was spottier. Uh, and uh, and so 
the, she has like a full on like attack basically in the court. Oh my gosh. I was like, wow. Yes. And uh, <laughs> um, it was a great moment when they were like, well, according to the state of California, this does not exist. Yeah. And, and then, and, and the, and the, uh, and, and then this is, is, is that the position of California or have you just not discovered it? And he said, I well, I watched that scene five times. I was <laughs> shook. I forgot that even existed. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, no, she, I was like, he was like, oh, I was like, oh, it looked like an oop moment. Like y'all, y'all have to watch that scene. Y'all will have to poor watch prosecutor has been through more in this show. <laughs> he has like, no, I, I need to figure out who he is because he's been a trooper all <laughs> this show's run like he's been a trooper okay yeah, he but, really was but like I, I understand bobby like you know she's older and stuff and i love how stacy told talked to her in the um at, at the um law firm like i'm gonna be mm-hmm. respectful like bobby like are you having hot flashes you gotta be, you gotta be yeah. careful about these things but she's trying to get her little groove back as a member she's divorced she's single she's on her business you know she had like her you know her her first daughter you know that she gave up you know probably mm-hmm. still there in her life but still trying to live her life, you no know, past Deb. And so they had that little fight thing about mentioning Deb. <laughs> yeah. Jason. Yeah. Well, and so then we have also, we have lots going on with Owen and Stacy. She evidently has super thin yoga pants. And <laughs> oh, that's real. That's real. Yeah, to this yoga retreat. And so then uh, Owen, <laughs> Owen wears like basically the same pants. And so like the attention, taking the attention away from her, the, now they're looking at him. And then Stacy says that she's never been in a successful relationship. And for the sake of the baby, we need to break up, which is ridiculous, of course. Right. And Owen says, I won't give up on us, which was so sweet. Yes. Yeah. So sweet. And, and then we have Nicole uh, says that Grayson just was not invest invested in the relationship. They broke up and, uh, there she's moving on to other opportunities. She gets the job recommendation from Jane mm-hmm. and gets a new job. And, and then we have, uh, this whole thing with, uh, Grayson and, and he says uh, that Grayson looks, Bobby says, Grayson looks at you the way he looked at Deb. Life is short. Tell them how you feel. Mm-hmm. Cause life is short. I love how they mention it's like all like, <laughs> like life is too short. You know? Yeah, and and like I said, this is a couple that just can't catch a break because they're just about yes. To, and then Stacy interrupts him and says, "Your mom's in the hospital." Like and Elaine, Jane's mom. like my mom right there. Like we talked about, like no, Jane's mom's in the hospital, and like yeah, that that was that was part one, y'all. I was like. <laughs> That's what she about to yeah. tell. Just when she's like, you know, her confessing her love. Like she wasn't gonna confess, mm-hmm. like, I'm dead. I'm gonna confess, I, I love you. Like I want to yeah. be with you. And this happens. But man, this episode right here. Yeah. I like-, like it. I just think the whole thing in Wyoming, that whole plot line is the it, it's not. I don't care about that. I mean, it's nice to see Grayson wearing cowboy boots, but that's about all it does. For me. Cowboy boots, but at, I feel like I, we have to understand like law is practice like. I mean, it's kind of good to know, like, law is practiced differently. Yeah, my top better states. law was what was the um the whole like night situation, like thirteenth century law. That was that was still on top of my list of great. Oh, stuff. oh, that one's so good. Yeah, yeah, but, that's yeah. such a great episode. <laughs> but but the way but the way that the oh, wife was trying to finesse to do this um divorce in Wyoming, not knowing that California get much of a better payout, and she um was doing fraudulent stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or her do yeah, he don't have the losses no more. Yeah. So I would give this one a seven. Okay. I'm gonna give this episode an 8.5 because of the whole like Deb's um uh, well Bobby's um you know sexual <laughs> her spot. Yes. Because, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so then we have Jane's secret revealed, and this is the finale as she worries about her mother's help. Jane takes on an Amish farmer's fight against fracking. Grayson represents a dominatrix who's suing a deadbeat client while Stacy asks Owen to help get their child into a good preschool. So what do you think about this one? Do you think it was a good finale? This was definitely... 
Mm. Was this a good finale? I think it's a great finale. I, I want to say very high they had score. some great hitters in here. I, I would give it a very high score. I think everything with Jane and her mom is really moving was, and it really works. I think that uh, the whole the this, the case with the Amish man and his son is very effective and well done. Uh, and I I think just on all counts, it really works. Everything with with Stacy and Owen is very sweet. Um, she's worried that she's not smart, and you, he says basically, "You picked it." a guy like me and it shows a high level of intelligence i'm not gonna cry on this podcast yes. so i'm not gonna cry <laughs> <laughs> well let me- I mean, it's surprising that they would have perry gilpin in this at first like a nothing role she's such a good actress that uh uh that for her to be like the head of the preschool uh mm-hmm. i it's a little surprising to me but you know basically like they're super snobs and and in order to i don't know where stacy is all of a sudden come into like major money because she evidently can just like throw down 25k for the no school. remember 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 she sold the pinkery remember yeah, that. but still 25k for that's I a know. lot yeah i'm like okay well let's talk about this our mixture situation because i was looking <laughs> like when i saw it i was like oh my gosh that is the wicked witch give yes. me once upon a time i'm here for everything yes <laughs> yes i uh um uh rebecca mater i love yes. her i love her in once upon a time she's oh so my good that arc was amazing yeah she's i mean she's team. almost as good as regina she oh my god were so they were together. they were they were definitely sisters mm-hmm. off and on camera like yeah that's what it was. <laughs> yeah but maybe no, it was because i i i thought about doing once upon a time but <gasps> maybe doing this method of this sort of longer season recap maybe that would work i'm here for it Rachel. Should I... let me know I, okay. I got i got the whole series on my show well right it's here. on disney plus too that too but i i'm an og i have behind the scenes stuff too like I'm an OG. <laughs> i bought the series every time it dropped it dropped either before uh-huh. or after my birthday a day apart and i was yeah. dedicated that way y'all it was really me- fun it is what i wish the live action remakes i wish that they were more like once upon a time yes. like taking the characters taking the, the ideas and giving it, it like using that nostalgia effectively and exactly. but telling us something new a new story or uh i don't know i just yeah they're really fun yeah but yeah. um but anyway uh so we have this whole guy that uh is the zach trent who's like charading as this clean water defenders but he's actually uh, associated with this Ivor oil, and okay. uh, and so yeah, it's it's bad. And then you have the uh, the son of the Amish man who has been shunned by the family. Mm-hmm. The the dad can't talk to him, and uh, and I thought that was all just done so well. It was. I cried, y'all. Mm-hmm. It was just like I understand because okay. if you never well watch tv shows or either like uh-huh. actually books about the honors honors community they are a tight knit they don't have like the oh, cell phones yeah. and stuff like they old school they, they still ride in buggies you know there's no spinners on them though but they're no they're doing everything from the ground up farming everything and mm-hmm. yeah and then when the when in the son says father please just look at me oh and then they hug i just thought it was so well done and i mean the with the amish they're great to have in stories because because you know that they're never going to watch the the story. It's so <laughs> nice. You know that it's like not that you want to be inaccurate. You want to still try to be accurate, but mm-hmm. I know it's there's a certain degree of freedom, I guess, with yeah, that. But they, but they did a great job. Tell, I thought they did. Yeah. yeah, they did a great job predicting, like you know, portraying them. In a- I mean, you wonder how he got there, um, because this was in Colorado, right? Um, oh, yeah colorado because yeah, because the he, zach probably, guy probably, he, he probably either did buggy or he might have did that's a long train. buggy ride all the way from colorado to california and maybe he did the train Although, oh train. maybe the train will work i'm thinking the train because the last thing you know because he's not gonna fly well and amish people will drive in cars but they just won't they will be driven but they won't drive mm. um too. and uh but so maybe that's it. But anyway, I, uh, 
I, cause you have this whole thing happening in Colorado and, and then Zach, the Zach guy, he used West Virginia results Ooh. for the, um, for, for the Colorado results. And, um, so then we also have Elaine dying. She's had a, um, brain tumor, uh, tumor. Yeah. Tumor. And, uh, and then she says to, uh, at first she says, you remember when I would read you Alice in Wonderland? And, and then she says, I never read you Alice in Wonderland. And, and she says, you're not my daughter ever since you were shot. I known a mother knows her child, but I love you, whoever you are. <laughs> and she dies. It was really like, good. <laughs> like that's love right there. Y'all like that's love. <laughs> now i'm still why this is a, a 11 now 10 <laughs> yeah and so then uh grayson and jane kiss finally oh my gosh and yeah. then old jane comes in like so they can't catch a break this couple old jane they comes can't. comes back hot and she says that jane isn't who you think she is so okay because because she mad as heck because of <laughs> her mama like yeah remember we're supposed to be apart though, but same time, at least not my mom, at least let me know my mama died. Like, be, you know, yeah. like, have them call well, you. And it just happened. Like, it, just it wasn't happened, that like, the same day or something? Like, it hadn't yeah. been. No, the only thing I can say happened is either Paul told her guardian angel or the angel told her, I don't know. Where you were in Paris. How'd you get here so fast? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. that's, that's true. That's, that's the TV series magic. But it's a fun way for it all to end. This, I am going to give this the, I'm going to give this my 10 for the, the, um, I think it's a really great finale, actually. Let's do a 10. This is a 10. Like, <laughs> man, this whole, yeah, this episode, it was just a lot of like tear, like tear jerkers in this episode, this season. Yeah. And as we end this season, we're going into the last last one and it'll probably be a little bit it'll probably be into april when we will do the season six wrap up because i'm going yes. to south by south with south by southwest next week and then you kind of have, i'll have to mm-hmm. have, i won't have time you know for a little bit to to watch a whole season of television yes. um, but sometime in april sometime ready. in april we'll do it and if you're listening and you got to through this whole long episode put a put in your comment hashtag rachel and jasmine uh let's see rachel and jasmine love grayson yeah how about that put that that in. Yes. yes rachel and jasmine love so we grayson. did owen once so yeah we, we have to do it twice but you know it's, it's owen like you yeah have to. yeah so but no definitely is a perfect time for you guys to catch up with the um, podcast that we done from season one mm-hmm. season five yeah. ready to go back and check out season one through five before we get into the last (laughs) season of season six yes so how can people find you jasmine you can find me here on instagram and twitter at shereem 16 s-h-r-e-e-m-1-6 and you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on round tomatoes so check that out also make sure you're following the podcast homework is pod homework is podcast all of our social media and if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group and merch store. Check that out. And uh, thanks so much. This was super fun. And uh, thanks to anybody who listened all the way through. This was super long. Episode. I know, right? But it was really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Bye.